All right, good morning everybody and welcome to our uh, wrap-up session for our Lady and the Tiger puzzle. As always, I would like to just get confirmation that you can both see and hear me. So, All clear. Yep, good morning. Perfect. All right, let's do this. Now, we've done uh, almost all of it, but there is one variation that we didn't quite have time for last time, and I didn't want to rush it because it can get a little confusing if I don't uh, take my time uh, where needed. Let me just make a new page here so we have a place to write, and we'll get going. All right, so in the next examples, I believe we've done 212, right? Yes, I'm pretty sure. But if you find one that we missed, except for the, the next two we're gonna do, let me know, maybe we missed one, don't know. We jumped around a little bit, but that's okay. In the next two examples, uh, the king gets a bit more creative with the rules. And he says, I just put it up here so it's not repeated in each exercise. It applies to both of the next two. If a lady is in room one, then the sign is going to be true. But if a tiger is in it, then it's false. If a lady is in room two, then the sign is false. But if a tiger is in it, then the sign is true. And this is all the king King's extra information. I say here as well, as emphasizing it, that you have to, in general, be very clear on what are the rules for this specific variation of Lady and the Tiger. I know how my general approach is going to start, but I need to be aware of all the rules, all the things before continuing too far. Regardless, late in the tiger, the king doesn't say anything about scenarios that aren't possible. I have two doors, so I can definitely set that up before looking at the detail, which happens next. So, in the two-door situation, I know I only have uh, four different possible scenarios. Best case is lady lady and we've seen these before now. Then I could have a mix of a lady and a tiger one way or the other way or I can have the worst case of two tigers but at least I would know. All right so my approach doesn't change just the detail is a little bit more confusing. I'm going to go about this in the same way that I'm going to look at my scenario, of, whoops, of course one at a time, so I'll look at the first scenario, hoping for the best, and then I'll evaluate what the doors are saying, and then we'll measure that against what the king is saying. The king just happens to say something a little bit more complicated. But it's still the same sequence of um, things that I do in my strategy. So, I'm looking at the lady-lady scenario. Door 1 says, both rooms contain ladies. Obviously true. Door 2 says, Oh, the same thing. Both rooms contain ladies. All right, great. That's true as well. But now, to figure out if this is possible or not, if it fits with what the king is saying, I have to really understand what the king is saying. And the king says a little more than usual. He says, if a lady is in room one, then that sign must be true. If a tiger is in room one, that sign must be false. So now I look and I see, well, in my scenario, there is a lady in room one. So the sign, according to the king, should be true 
and it is so that checks out I move on to door 2 because the king says something different about room door 2 if a lady is in room 2 then the sign should be false and if a tiger is in it the sign should be true so it's flipped around now I have a lady in room 2 I found true but the king says it should be false so that does not agree with what the king says and therefore that scenario is not possible but I have to be very clear on what the king is saying so that I can now sort of measure and compare my scenario against what he says to see if it's possible or not how do we feel about that so far now maybe I didn't read this enough times but in general you have to read this as many times as you need to to be very clear on what information I have but there's a sequence to it first set it up then go through each scenario and for that scenario evaluate what the doors are saying then measure that against what the king is saying and of course the doors say different things the king says different things so that's where the variety comes in maybe you're not sure what to ask let's do another one so this is now out right so I move on to the next scenario in my list your list could look different we still have four possibilities I'm trying to uh, eliminate them and be left with only one it's the same basic start to the strategy actually the same strategy lady tiger scenario so door one says both rooms contain ladies that is obviously I hope false both rooms don't contain ladies well <laughs> I don't want to say it like that. It's not the case that both rooms contain ladies. Door 2 says both rooms contain ladies. That's again false. But that doesn't, that doesn't mean it's a bad thing or really anything. I've just evaluated, assuming my scenario is what's happening, how do the doors behave? Now I compare that to how the king says they should behave door one the king says different things for different doors so I do them one at a time if a lady is in room one the sign should be true if a tiger is in it the sign should be false a lady is in it so the sign should be true yet I got a false that is inconsistent and contradicts what the king says about how this is working now I can go ahead and look at what is happening behind door two but I already got a contradiction it really doesn't matter what is happening behind door two or with door two I already got a contradiction and it's therefore not possible so I don't waste my time to check it because it's not going to change my mind and not possible is still going to happen whether I can do a check mark or uh, cross it out it's still the same conclusion here so that one is out as well but I do want to check at this stage how we feel about what's happening in this variation um just to clarify so there's two sets of true or false right and they both need to um, align they both need to say the same thing yes in order they both need to, to align but there are different ways to go about this another way certainly is and I've seen some people do it to use the King's information first and then go to the doors I find that more confusing everyone that's well not everyone a lot of people that have gone that sequence uh, be, and end up being more confused so I prefer personally as well to check the doors first and then see if it aligns with what the king is saying for some reason that 
uh, eliminates confusion as much as possible. Now, you can, of course, flip back and forth as you want. Regardless, I want to know if, uh, in my scenario, the door's behavior aligns with what the king is saying, regardless of which one I do first. But it's nice to have some consistency. Uh, so I choose to evaluate my scenario first, then see if it aligns, so to speak. But this is certainly not the only way. Uh, I, I find people get confused if you if you focus too much on what the king says too early. Yes, technically, he is giving me facts that I could incorporate from the start. But we're trying to find the path of least resistance here. And uh, this is one way to avoid as much confusion as I can. There are other ways, but the goal ultimately is regardless to see if there is consistency through that scenario or if anything can contradicts anything else, regardless of how uh, exactly you go about it. Any other thoughts at this stage? Would you be able to do like both examples? So would you be able to do the Kings like? Uh... I don't want to because it's going to, okay. I've done this enough times to, well, I don't want to do it now. I've done this enough times to know that mixing things up creates a lot of confusion in some people and those people don't speak up and I can't help them until it's too late. Okay. But in a Q&A session, we can totally spin it around and maybe find one that you prefer because then okay. it's optional. If someone doesn't want to listen, they don't have to. Okay. Uh, uh, for for uh, what, what gives me confidence or grows confidence uh, is consistency. So if I find something that works without much trouble, then I want to try and repeat that and build that confidence. And if I, at this early stage, flip back and forth between things that are essentially the same, but don't on the surface appear to be the same, uh, some people get extremely confused. And uh, my job is kind of to avoid that. But definitely there are sessions and times where we can certainly try and mix it up for sure. Awesome, thanks. So not the answer you were looking for, but... <laughs> uh, yeah, I, I can't. I can't do that at this stage. All right, but what we're doing here seems to work, and whatever you end up doing, if you sit there right now thinking, "What is this guy talking about?" I know I'm, what I'm doing. I'll do it a different way. My way works. Totally fine. I still encourage you be consistent in whatever way you are settled uh, in using. We have two more scenarios. We haven't found one that is uh, aligned, con consistent, possible, whatever words you want to use. So the next one in my list is Tiger Lady. Door one says, both rooms contain ladies. Obviously false. Door two says, both rooms contain ladies. Again, false. Now I look at what the king says. Under my assumption, door one behaves this way. But the king says that if a lady is in room one, then the sign is true. Tiger in it, sign should be false. Well, I have a tiger in it. The sign should be false. It is false, so everything matches up. If a lady is behind door two, the sign should be false. I got a lady. My sign is false, so that also matches up. So everything is consistent with how the king uh, says the doors should behave. Now for my peace of mind, I know I can stop right there because our questions are well set up, but I'm going to check the other one to eliminate all but one possibility. Tiger Tiger is the last one in my list. Both doors say both rooms contain ladies. That is definitely false for each. They say the exact same thing. Now, that doesn't mean bad. The king says, if a lady is behind or behind door one, the sign is true. If a tiger is behind it, the sign is false. 
I have a tiger behind door one. Sign should be false. It is. Go to door two. If a lady is in the room two, the sign is false. The tiger is in it. The sign is true. I have a tiger in it. My sign is false. But the king said it should be true. Inconsistent. Not possible. So there's the tendency, let me just repeat that sort of, there's a tendency to say, oh, the king is saying a lot here. I should use this first. I didn't use it uh, in the previous example. And the king said something there as well. And in, if I look at something like exercise 212, it's going to be a little bit more difficult to use the king's information first before evaluating the doors. Then I'm dipping my toes into the other strategy and that can be much more difficult so because <clears throat> I don't necessarily know from one question to the next uh, which when the King's information is going to be easy to use from the start or a little bit more confusing it is much safer to always just evaluate the doors and then match it against what the King is saying there's more consistency in this method uh, I can cross this one out, right? And with this, I'm never going to run the risk of uh, sort of crossing over a little bit to a strategy one that is more confusing. This one has uh, sort of a plug-and-play feature. I'm always doing the same thing. Oh, what are the doors saying this time? All right. What's the king saying this time? Oh, it matches or it doesn't. There's a lot of consistency and trying to keep it simple and that gives me confidence. If I see a lady in the tiger question, I know what I'm going to do. Unless there are like 10 doors, I'm good. And that's not going to happen for us. So it's all manageable. And that's the goal here. We want to get confidence in our logical reasoning. So we want to, of course, choose whether you write this or not. If you put a box around your... Um, scenario that's totally fine we want to choose door two but make sure if you put a box around this one you don't choose door one that then the prisoner is not gonna make it all right next one again um don't wait for me to ask if there are any questions just interrupt whenever you feel like it uh that was uh, which one was that that was uh, Scrolling got away from me there. My computer is struggling today. I'm also streaming to uh, D2L, and for some reason that is making things a little slow. Can we get to 214? There we go. I'll just put it like this. 214 is our next one. Two. 14. All right, so now it's the same situation. Same situation, I've gotten used to it now. If a lady in room one, the king says lady means true sign, tiger, and it's false. And in room two, it's flipped around. So let's focus on the exercise here. Oh, the scrolling. When I'm scrolling, there's a delay. Come on, you can do it. There we go. Nice. Okay. But I see two rooms. No scenarios were eliminated from the start. Like the king says, maybe, oh, there can only be one lady. Okay, then I can eliminate some. Nothing like that happens, which means I'm going to list all of them. So... I will list them in whatever order I prefer as long as I have them all. And I do them from the start, so I just make sure I focus on one thing at a time. The two door one, I always, whoopsie, I always do the same thing. It gives me confidence. All these little things, confidence goes such a long way, especially in math. All right, so now I'm gonna. I know what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna s investigate each of these scenarios one at a time according to what the doors are saying. If that scenario is true, then the doors are behaving a certain way. Then I'll check if 
that way is actually uh, appropriate. Door 1 says, at least one room contains a lady. Now, you haven't said a lot, so you can do the true or false ones here. At least one room contains a lady. True or false? True. True, because at least one is one or more. And I happen to have more. Door 2 says, the other room contains a lady. I didn't say it was hard. I'm just trying also to true. you to speak up. True. <laughs> nothing. If we go slowly and we take the right approach, nothing is really hard here. What becomes hard, or wh when it becomes hard, is when we try and do too much at once, or we look at too many different things at once, or we mix up the strategy, those things. Avoid those things. Nothing is uh, really challenging here. Little bits at a time. Now, I'm not going to scroll up because we remember what the king says. He says, if a lady is behind door one, the sign should be true. And that's exactly what we got. So that matches. Door two, if a lady is behind door two, it was the other way around. It should be false and we got it true. So sadly, the best case scenario is not what is happening. We found a contradiction with the king. Uh, while I'm thinking of this, uh, I, am, I have to say that if you do the problems and you look at the very rough answer key, those are old versions that I have refined in the meantime, and they might not the answers might not look exactly the same as ours in terms of the layout and the check marks and things like that. I've, I've, I've improved it since then. Uh, but I can't rewrite all those answers uh, all the time. So just it might, if it doesn't look perfectly familiar or matches exactly how your layout looks, then check with me first. Don't immediately think you're wrong or anything like that. And there could be a typo as well. So use those uh, uh, with a grain of salt. It's not that they're trying to be wrong or misleading. They are just uh, not teaching tools. That's where our Q&A sessions come in. Use those to ask questions. We actually have one today at 12.30. Now, 12.30 might not uh, necessarily suit your schedule. I just had to pick a time. Who knows when? Uh, there's also a Sunday morning one. That's a good time. What else are you going to do on a Sunday morning? So hopefully those times somewhere suit you. And in our class time, there's also sometimes Q&A sessions. Moving on to Lady Tiger scenario. Door 1 says, I don't remember, I have to go and check. Door 1 says, at least one room contains a lady. Just to get you involved, true or false? True. True. Door 2 says, the other room contains a lady. True. True. Now I investigate. The king says, lady behind door one, the sign should be true. It is. King says, tiger behind door two, the sign should be true. It is. So we have our winner nice and early. But up to you. I like to continue. I need to practice, perhaps. Tiger lady is the next scenario I'm investigating. Door one says, at least one room contains a lady. True. True. Doesn't say where, so that's good. Door two says, the other room contains a lady. False. That is false. The other room does not have a lady. That doesn't mean bad or good. I now have to investigate the whole thing and see, or evaluate it against what the king is saying. Let me just make clear where I am right now. I erase this arrow. Now, King says, if there's a tiger behind door one, the sign should be false. I got a true. That cannot happen. I don't really care to evaluate the next one. I already got my contradiction. Any contradiction, I can't cancel. It's not going to be canceled by another contradiction. One contradiction and the whole thing is out. But that is actually good news for me 
because I think I already found the answer. I don't think we found a tiger tiger as the answer. Hmm. We found lady lady. Maybe somewhere there's two tigers. The prisoner has no chance. Let's just see this one. Tiger tiger. Door one says at least one room contains a lady. And then you say False. False. Uh, door two says the other room contains a lady. Now there's no ladies here. It's also false. But that doesn't mean it's a bad thing. Let's see. The king says if there's a tiger behind door one, the sign should be false. It is. The king also says if there's a tiger behind door two, it's the other way around. The sign should be true. But we got a false. That does not match up, and we got what we hoped for, but we had to be sure that that scenario is also not the case, and our second scenario was, in fact, with 100% certainty, what is happening. Go ahead, prisoner, choose door one and be free. Again, the, our questions won't try and trick you. If you find one, feel free to stop, but you're going to have time, you'll see. Uh, technically, to be 100% certain, uh, we have to eliminate all possibilities, and then whatever is left, however unlikely you may think it is, that one is correct. If we stop short in general, then we're just going with uh, what we hope. We hope we're correct. We hope there isn't a trick or a catch or weird information. And we stop early. It's likely. It's not 100%. All right. Those were all our examples. I tried to stretch this over three days to give us time to just let this settle in. We don't have to hurry. Because the, the reasoning that we're using is really the same across all of these puzzles. It might we, we mix them up to keep it interesting, but it's all the same. We're just sort of recycling that same deductive reasoning. So it's worth spending the time and just let these things settle in. And with a slow pace, maybe you don't have that much homework to do or anything. So that's always good news. Now we did exercise 2 for 15 already. Same strategy, just three doors. And our choices weren't that much. Anyway, now it is up to you to look at these problems. You see, they're very familiar. Of course, only look at the problems if you are perfectly happy with those exercises. If you didn't look at the video, you didn't look at your notes, can you do the exercises on your own? Do you understand what we did? Are you happy with the strategy? All right, maybe then you're ready to go into the problems. But don't rush to the problems. I did say leave 2.8 as the last one. Uh, it's a little bit more difficult perhaps, but there's some to think about, some to challenge you. Uh, they're not unfamiliar or new or, uh, or anything strange. I will say that problem 211 and 212 are there to challenge you if you feel that all of this is too easy and you're bored to tears. These are not test level questions. I never know, should I leave them in? Should I take them out? Ah, I don't know. So I end up leaving them in. But if you are happy with the difficulty of lading the tiger, you just want to get uh, test ready, feel free to ignore those. You will not. Uh, miss anything or if you're worried like I don't want to I think I got it I don't want to confuse myself at this stage ignore them don't look at 211 and 212 all right now we could certainly discuss these problems but it's very important for you to think about them first it doesn't matter if problem 2.6 takes me half an hour to do or an hour it doesn't matter that struggle is still worth it it's going to make you better but it is ultimately you having to struggle with it a little bit and then every question you do the struggle becomes a little less a little less look, look for consistency in your strategy 
to give yourself just have a question about the problem um if we are struggling with a problem and we attend the q a would you go over it oh yeah in the q a we do whatever you want to do absolutely uh just make sure however I, i would still do it but for your benefit just make sure that you have uh sort of put in all the effort you can uh otherwise when i just do it for you in a way sometimes you don't get as much out of it so if you have a problem don't like oh, i'm reading this once oh i don't know i'm gonna ask him no put in some effort because even if that effort doesn't appear to be fruitful you don't actually get to the answer some some benefit uh is still there so make sure you've tried your, the problem uh yourself first yeah. and then we can definitely do it yeah I also have a quick question. Yeah. Uh, will the Q and A also be uh, uploaded onto YouTube uh, later today? Um, I found that people are a little bit hesitant to stop by those sessions, discuss their issues. Which I mean, they're they're not confident, right? You have a question, you might not feel so confident. You're a little bit hesitant. You're unsure. You're maybe a little nervous or whatever. Uh, if I then put that on uh, for everyone to see, people are a little bit more hesitant to use those sessions. So as a rule, the Q and A sessions will not be backed up. It's okay. it's your session. It's for you personally to discuss your issues, not for others to to view it as many times as they want. All right. Okay. Thank you. Any other questions? So if you are, I will say, if you are using YouTube or wherever to view your, uh, to, to view the sessions, we'll still have all the, we'll still stream it to all of those uh, places, the Q&A session. I just won't leave the YouTube video up. I'll delete it right away. So if you like YouTube and you want to watch it through that or you want to do it through D2L or whatever, uh, that'll still happen. I'm just gonna, not going to leave the videos for viewing later on. And Discord, of course, doesn't have any backups. All right. Any other questions before we end this and give you some more time to work on the problems? Um, Again, I have yeah. a quick question about the uh, Karuji puzzle. Um, I'm just wondering when I was looking at the problems, I noticed the problems were all three by threes. So I was wondering if we need to be really confident oh, in four by true? fours for a test or would it yes, just be definitely, uh, is that true? Oh, that was, oh, well, did you see, uh, let me just, I, I'm struggling to scroll here. I've been scrolling super super slow. No, I think you're right. I'm just trying to find the problems now. Yeah, it's just two little ones. You're right. Um, Is that the same for the Sudoku puzzles? Are we doing three by threes or uh, the six? Well, it's not three by three. It's the six one. So the the normal Sudoku is nine. I'll say nine by nine. Now, that just, we, it doesn't add anything to uh, the methods, to our understanding, to anything. It just takes longer. And for that reason, the Sudoku, I'll keep at uh, 6 by 6 The 9x9 nine nine doesn't add anything. It adds time. That's it. Whereas if you go from the 3x3 three three Karuji to the 4x4, four four, the reasoning involved is a little bit uh, different. So we definitely want to be able to handle the 4x4 four four Karuji as well. But Sudoku, uh, we'll stick to the smaller version. Now, in our Discord uh, channel, I put a link to an ebook you can find randomly on the internet uh, that has more Karuji puzzles. It actually goes up to 5x5, five five, which we are not going to test on. You can use that for a challenge. So the extra problems are there. It's just not in the book. Please remember to click the like button if you enjoyed the video and to subscribe if you want to be notified of more videos.
Thank you.